the enemy cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. So everything he can't kill, he wants to steal. Could the enemy be stealing your today with your worry about tomorrow? Could he threaten you with death tomorrow so much that you don't enjoy life today? So what good is being alive today if you're going to spend your life today worrying about death tomorrow? If I was the enemy, I would stop life from being fun. I would make you miserable in all that stuff God gave you. I couldn't stop him from giving it to you, but I would worry you to death until you had a real nice bed you couldn't sleep in. And a pool that you didn't enjoy and a house that wasn't comfortable. And you look around at all that stuff and you might as well be where you were. Because if I can't take your stuff, I can take your mind from enjoying the stuff I gave you. I came to tell you this morning, the devil is after your mind. He's after your mind. He's after your mind. He's after your mind, brother. He's after your mind. Let me tell you something. That's why the, that's why the car broke down. That's why the roof started leaking. That's why they threatened your job. Let me tell you something. The devil don't drive and he don't want to go to work. So he doesn't need your car and he's not after your job. He's just using that stuff to go after your mind. Because the mind is your power. Because you're fighting without your sinful weapon. Your mind is the lion's teeth, it's the eagle's wings, it's the elephant's weight, it's the cheetah's speed. So if I were your enemy and I wanted to paralyze you in any place, I would paralyze you in your mind until you didn't make good decisions because you were so worried about things that only I can fix. If positive confession brought salvation then negative faith confession brings destruction let me put it in biblical terms you are snared by the words of your mouth the only reason you're going down is because of what you say about you it is what you say if you're talking about what people say about you what people say about you does not matter at all if what people said about you could kill you, I'd have been dead a long time ago. What people say about you does not matter at all. What you say about you. Stop speaking negativity into your spirit that is canceling out what God wants to give you. And he says, if you focus on your purpose rather than your person, if you focus on your purpose rather than your person, if you focus on your purpose rather than your problems, if you focus on your purpose with positive faith, like you lay down with that negative faith every night and beat yourself up. I don't look right, I'm not tall, I'm not short, I'm too fat, I'm too thin, I'm too dark, I'm too light. I wish I wasn't a woman, I wish I'd have been a man. I can't fight in this world, all this negative stuff. Look at my hair, I don't like my nose. I need to get my face fixed, I die. Shut up! If you thought about it and you didn't think to a solution, leave it alone. If you keep going over and over again, you have gone from thinking to worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Say it. Do not. Say it again. See, the reason I wanted you to say it is one thing for me to say it, but I wanted your ear to hear your mouth say, do not. Say it again. Say it again. When you get home, what you gonna say? When you get ready for bed, what you gonna say? When you're driving to work Monday, what you gonna say? When you go to court, what are you gonna say? When you meet with the RS, what you gonna say? When you get ready to pay the bills, what you gonna say? Because when you say do not worry, you stop the buffering that's going on in your head and you can get a clear word from God. God used Moses' mouth to deliver all the Hebrews from Egypt. And it couldn't even 
talk. So this is not about the, the way you talk or the w way you look. It's about the way you For as a man, so is he. And if you think right, then, then nothing else that you're worried about is going to get in the way because your mind is your power and your power God says if you trust me I'll take you into the next dimension I'll take you into a level that you'll get stuff that you never saw it coming I'll send love to the loveless help to the helpless bread to the hungry I will give you houses that you didn't build, you didn't work for, you didn't labor for it. I'm just going to lay it on you to those of you that are ready to go to the next dimension. This word is for you. God says if you focus on him, he'll give you things that you never sold for, that you never planted, that you never expected. He says he will pour you out blessings coming from all directions. Seek ye first the kingdom of God in all its righteousness and all all these things shall be added unto you. That's why the devil's been fighting you. Because God's getting ready to add to you. I dare you to praise him. I double dare you. I double dare you to open your mouth. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So everything he can't kill, he wants to steal. Could the enemy be stealing your today with your worry about tomorrow? Could he threaten you with death tomorrow so much that you don't enjoy life today? So what good is being alive today if you're going to spend your life today worrying about death tomorrow? If I was the enemy, I would stop life from being fun. I would make you miserable in all that stuff God gave you. I couldn't stop him from giving it to you, but I would worry you to death until you had a real nice bed you couldn't sleep in. And a pool that you didn't enjoy and a house that wasn't comfortable. And you look around at all that stuff and you might as well be where you were.